good day to you mate. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and follow me on my Facebook page. Enjoy the video. In this video, we will discuss EPIRB. Emergency position indicating radio beacon. Types of EPIRB. How to activate the EPIRB. How does EPIRB works. What to do when false alert. Testing. And maintenance of EPIRB. Emergency position indicating radio beacon. EPIRB is a device used to alert search and rescue services, SAR, in case of an emergency out at sea. It is tracking equipment that transmits a signal on a specified band to locate a lifeboat, life raft, ship, or people in distress. An EPIRB is a secondary means of distress alerting which is to say that it comes later in the hierarchy of alerting SAR authorities in case of distress. The types of EPIRB are COSPAS SARSET EPIRBs under the COSPAS SARSET system work on the 406.025 MHz and 121.5 MHz band and are applicable for all sea areas. In Marsity, 1.6 GHz band is the one which this EPIRB works on. These are applicable for sea areas A1, A2 and A3. VHF Channel 70 this works on the 156.525 MHz band and is applicable for C area A1 only. How to activate the EPIRB? The EPIRB needs to be activated to emit signals. This could be done manually by pushing a button on the unit or it could happen automatically if and when it comes in contact with water. The device is essentially battery operated. This helps because power is the first entity to be affected in case of a calamity. Hydrostatic release units HRU, are pressure-activated mechanisms designed to automatically deploy when certain conditions are met. In the marine environment, this occurs when submerged underwater to a depth between 1 to 4 meters. The activation depth will vary depending on the model. The pressure of the water against a diaphragm within the sealed casing causes a plastic pin to be cut, which releases the float-free bracket casing, allowing the EPIRB to float free to the water's surface. The EPIRB must be free of obstructions to float to the surface. Once the EPIRB is released and exposed to the water, it automatically activates via the water-activated switch. The EPIRB floats to the surface of the water with the aerial pointing vertically, and the distress signal is transmitted. Here is a sample illustration on how does EPIRB works. What to do during false alert? It is possible that the EPIRB might get activated by mistake by an individual on board. In order to prevent a chain of SAR operations in motion, it is imperative that the EPIRB false transmission is cancelled. In case the EPIRB is falsely activated, the nearest coast station or RCC, Rescue Coordination Center, must be informed immediately of this event and is mentioned, cancel it. The cancellation intimation must also be sent to the appropriate authority. The shipowner and or the agent must also be informed. How to test an EPIRB? The EPIRB should be tested once a month to ensure operational integrity and must be logged into the GMDSS logbook. The testing procedure depends on the manufacturer. Here is a sample procedure in testing of EPIRB. So the first thing to do when you want to test your beacon is remove it from the mounting bracket, ensuring that the antenna is vertical. Lift the latch on the top of the EPIRB. You'll see the on-off switch, which obviously you shouldn't activate unless it is a true emergency. And you'll also see your test button. When you press and hold the test button for two seconds, the green LED on the side of the beacon will flash once, accompanied with a high beep, and the strobe light on the top of the beacon will also flash. That's indicating that the test procedure has started. The beacon will then test four elements of the circuitry. The first is the electrical circuitry within the beacon. The second is the 121.5 MHz homing transmitter. The third is the 406 MHz radio transmitter. And the last test is for the GPS receiver. Now, of course, these are GPS beacons, and as I mentioned, non-GPS beacons will have a different set of lights. When you press the button on the top, 
you should see four green flashes and four high beeps, followed by one long illumination of the green LED. That's indicating that each of the four tests is successful and the long green flash at the end indicates that all tests are complete. Maintenance of EPIRB. The EPIRB must be inspected visually for any defects such as cracks. It is advisable to clean the EPIRB once in a while with a dry cloth. While cleaning, the switches must be specifically checked. The expiry date of the battery must be checked to cover the immediate as well as the next voyage at the least. Send the EPIRB back to the service agent or the supplier request a service if the EPIRB fails the monthly checks. In the event that the HRU has crossed its expiry date, the HRU must be replaced on board and HRU must be marked with an expiry date two years into the future. Ever battery specification. Ever battery has a fixed lifetime and should be regularly checked to ensure it transmits properly in an emergency situation. Has 12 volt battery. 48 hours of transmitting capacity. Normally replaced every two to five years. Mount location. The effectiveness of an EPIRB is dependent on where the unit is mounted, an EPIRB should be mounted in. The outside of the vessel. The vessel may list or roll during submersion, so take this into consideration during installation. In a clear open space away from any obstructions. Where it is easy to access in an emergency and manual activation is required. Where it is protected from damage. Ok mate, that's all for this video, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching mate and if you like the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell button to keep updated in my upcoming videos.